Hi everybody, how are you? Uh, Jason back here with uh, the famous debate question, I guess. Uh, which one should I get if I only have enough for money for one? Or if I could only get one guitar, which one should I get? The Ert Telly? Ta da! Or the IYV Telly? Both of which are extremely uh, talked about on YouTube and even on guitar forums, I've found. So, um, which one should you get? Um, hmm, that is debatable. Firstly, though, I want to send a shout out to uh, some people who have been commenting on my videos and uh, have provided some really good information and have helped me out and encouraged me to keep kind of doing these videos. So, um, so I want to say hello and thank you to, um, to Jimmy, David, Henry, Tuway Muir, Russell, Howie, Bobby, um, Sue, Frank, uh, Gypsy Lee, and Jean. Um, thanks, guys and girls. I, I, I appreciate your comments and, uh, and you uh, filling me in on you know, your mods and the stuff that you guys are doing. And it, uh, it gives me ideas and it makes me feel like I'm not the only one you know, <laughs> trying to upgrade these guitars or do different things. or Anyway. Uh, so yeah, I, pr I appreciate y'all. So so yeah, so back to the question. Um, the answer is it's uh, totally relative. Um, it's it's really a personal preference thing. So you have to figure out the type of guitar that you like. You have to t figure out if you like uh, traditional sounding more so uh, versus like um, more like a aggressive or humbucker style tones. You have to figure out the type of uh, neck materials that you like. Personally, I'm a maple guy. I like a maple fretboard. Uh, you might be a rosewood person or maybe, you know, uh, ebony or I don't know, whatever the case might be. Um, so you have to figure out uh, what you like because these two guitars are different. Um, and then, of course, you have to figure out how much money you're willing to spend on a guitar that's basically a no-name guitar, right? Like... Um, these companies are relatively new as far as I know I've never really heard of them before uh, certainly haven't seen these brands here at PEI I'm probably the only person who has one um, uh, it's just uh, right so they're all questions that you have to ponder or are you, are you gonna spend more money to get like a, a known name on the headstock but maybe end up with a guitar that's just as good or not as good you know it's hard to say um, I was in a music store yesterday uh, and I looked at a classic vibe telly there um, nice looking telly um, I don't know about where you guys live but here in, in Canada Prince Edward Island a classic vibe telly runs yeah, 679 bucks so six hundred and seventy nine dollars for a clap for an overseas telly uh, yes it has the fender name on it I guess maybe that's the difference but for me in my pocketbook I'm not paying almost $800 after taxes for an overseas guitar. That's definitely not going to go up in value. Do I have any issues about overseas stuff? No, absolutely not. Most of the stuff I play is overseas. I've had the custom vintage American stuff. I've had all the, and you know what? The overseas stuff is every bit as good. The only issue I have with that is, although the name is there, the value isn't. When you come to sell it, they're like, well, this is not American, this is not this, this is not that. So you lose, you lose the value. So anyway, so getting back to these two guitars, um, the fit and finish on both of these. Now, this is my experience, okay? Now, I realize some of you guys weren't as lucky, or I guess maybe it got, got a bad batch or something. I don't know, but my experience, okay? Uh, the fit and finish on both of these were fantastic. For the price point and the way they were shipped in these little flimsy boxes, I could not believe... Um, how they they came both of these out of the box I only had to tune them and I, and they were totally playable now the strings were crappy the frets needed to be clean uh, the guitars had dust on them um, just you know typical stuff when you're buying something that's probably mass produced however um, I've bought I keep saying fender just don't get me wrong i'm not picking on fender it's just because that's what these are based off of clearly so and fender should be the king of kings like 
right, when it comes to these style of guitars, they've been around the longest, they've been building them the longest, the, nothing should come close, all right? So that's why I keep referring to Fender just to clear the air. It's not because I have anything against Fender, I've owned many of them in the past. Um, uh, so, so yeah, so uh, basically these two guitars are every bit as good as any Fender guitar that I've owned. So I'm just, oh, you're exaggerating. No, like, I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. Um, now, if I was a professional musician and, you know, I, I wasn't just self-taught and I actually had good technique and I could, you know, maybe uh, a Fender-built high-end, you know, higher spectrum quality, whatever, guitar would, would definitely make a difference in my performances. But at my level of play and my level of ability and technique, whether I'm playing a $2,000 guitar or whether I'm playing this $175 IYV from Amazon, uh, <laughs> if you're listening to me, you know, in a club and my you know, little band is playing, you are not gonna be able to tell the difference. You just, you're just not. Like, it, it's just the reality of the thing. I'm, I'm you know, tone is in the fingers. I really believe that the player really makes the guitar sound like, right? Like if uh, Brad Paisley came into my house and played my IYV, he would sound like Brad Paisley. He wouldn't sound like me. If I played Brad Paisley's guitar, I would sound like me. I wouldn't sound like him, right? It's just, it's just the way it is. So anyway, so both of these guitars, fit and finish wise, were fantastic. Both of these guitars had their issues, okay? Neither one was intonated properly when they came out of the box. They were playable, like I said, but they weren't perfect. Both of these have high frets. They still have high frets. I haven't touched either one. Now, they don't fret out. They don't, uh, you know, die out or anything, but you can, I know they're high because I'm getting some buzzes and weird spots on one string, but the one string down from that, it's not buzzing. So clearly there's, there's you know, some fret inconsistencies. And once this COVID stuff, goes away hopefully if it ever does I'll be able to I'll cross the bridge PI go into Brunswick and see my uh, guitar tech guy there and and get him to you know make these guitars like perfect or whatever right but for now they are totally fine the way they are um, both these guitars had little just imperfections in the builds which surprises me because they're CNC machine made so so here's here's what I mean um, um, so this guitar look Look, for example, look at the string through body holes, okay? Look how crooked they are. Can you guys see that? Like, that doesn't make sense. That should be perfectly straight. Whereas on this one, on the IYV, which is half price from the Eric guitar, look at this. These are perfect. They're perfectly straight. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Now, the IYV, though, the bridge plate was slightly off-center just slightly off center the strings were actually like crooked going up the neck um not enough to make the guitar unplayable like you know i said before i i never even noticed it during the unboxing it's only when i bought this black bridge plate and i went to switch the bridge plate when i started looking at stuff and thinking wow this something's off and actually one of these pickups just the the pickup holding plate here is is slightly Crooked, like it's a little closer to the bridge plate at this corner than it is at that corner. So, just little imperfections like that, which I guess maybe the CNC machine doesn't do everything. Maybe like some somebody in in the shop or whatever has the job to drill the string through body holes, like by hand or something. I I don't know, but clearly whoever did these <laughs> was missing their first cup of coffee, or uh, it was three o'clock on a Friday and they were. They wanted to just get it done and get out of there, right? So there are going to be some imperfections. Don't expect to buy one of these guitars for 389 bucks or 175 bucks or whatever and not have imperfections. I have bought $600 to $1,500 Fender Telecasters, Fender Stratocasters, and I found those similar problems on those guitars as well. Stuff was off-center. Uh, some of the pickups were just not positioned properly in the cavity. Um, minute little things that can easily be fixed. But what I find strange is when it comes to Fender, I don't 
hear those arguments a lot. Like, oh, you know, oh, I had to get this fixed or whatever. But they don't say, like, whereas, whereas with these guitars, if there's anything wrong, it's like people, oh, you know, these are crap. This, this is wrong with it and this is wrong with it. It's a $300 guitar. There's going to be something wrong with it, right? But it's totally playable. But when you're buying a $1,500 or $17 or $2,000 uh, Fender, there shouldn't be anything wrong with it. Those frets should be perfect. That nut should be perfect. Um, the volume pots, the pickups or whatever should sound fantastic. You shouldn't have to change anything. But you do. Most people... I'm, Brad Paisley's guitar and all these famous, you know, country players or, or rock players' guitar, um, John Five, his, you think any of those are stock, off-the-shelf guitars? Maybe for big tours when they're going to be on the road a lot, they, I would bet they don't bring their babies with them for fear that they, they're going to be in an accident, stolen, whatever, right? Maybe they use something off, off the rack, but... I guarantee you that their guitar tech sets those babies up perfectly for their level of play and probably swaps, you know, electronics or pickups for whatever, you know, techniques or, or uh, little tricks that they use to get the sounds that they have. Um, it's just Fender, tele Fender doesn't build Telecasters for me. They don't even know that. They could care less. They just build a Telecaster with, you know, generic specs. And then I pick it up and then I get the frets done and I get all this stuff, right? They don't call me asking me what kind of guitar I want. So when it comes to these lower end guitars, you can expect that they are not going to be perfect. But for the price, um, they are extremely good guitars. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. And I'm not advocating for these companies. Earth doesn't know who I am. IYV doesn't know who I am. I don't know who they are. I, and I, you know, whatever. Honestly, I, I could care less. But they make a product that allows me to buy more stuff that's decent quality. And, and right, because everybody likes to have a couple extra guitars or more guitars than you actually need. You can only play one at a time. But who wants to have just one, right? But I can't afford to buy... $700 guitars and just have a collection of them or or $2,000 vintage guitars and have a collection as much as I would love to It's just not in the cards for me. I just can't do that. You know, I have kids. I have a wife. I have you know, responsibilities I have and uh, I, My job doesn't allow me that much financial freedom. I just can't do it. If you guys can that's great But I can't so these companies putting out these awesome guitars at a price point that you know anybody can buy is um, is fantastic for for a guy like me like it's just it's great so so yeah, so really for me, I'll, I'll tell you, um, if I could only choose one guitar, if I could only pick one, the Ert would be the winner. And uh, not because, again, not because it sounds better, not because, and, and when I'm going to do some sound clips later, and I, I'm sure some of you will like the, the, the way the IYV sounds better than this one. And, you know, for the most part, I would almost agree. Um, the only reason why I like this one better uh, keep in mind it's double the price, but it's still fairly cheap for 389 bucks. The only reason I like this one better is because it has body contours. I have like you know it has the forearm contour, it has the the belly contour here, it has a contour down here at the at the hand to reach the higher frets. It has a contoured heel. Um, the neck is super comfortable. Um, stainless steel frets is the big thing for me, and a maple fretboard. So that's my preference. Like I like. I had one guitar in my life, and I still have it today, that has stainless steel frets, and it just, I, I just couldn't believe it when I picked it up. The th it feels like glass when you play on them. Uh, some people don't like that. They, they feel it's too frictionless, so they overbend stuff, and they don't like it. I think it's fantastic. I just, I love the stainless steel fret. So here in PEI, you can't get a guitar refretted with stainless steel for under $400. Like, it's just... The labor and the cost involved and the time, um, you just, here, you can't do it. So, uh, um, for, for me to buy a guitar for 389 bucks that already comes with that, that was just, it was just a no-brainer. So when I saw this guitar, I, you know, when I read some reviews and I saw some videos on YouTube, I, I bought it right away for that purpose, hoping that it would be good, and it is. I, I really like it. It's good. Um, so for me, if I could only buy one, that would be it. However, if you like the, you know, the, um, 
like the semi hollow body style of guitar, you know, with the F hole. And if you like kind of the two, uh, either humbucker, I have P90s in it now, but um, if you if you like the two humbucker style guitar and you're a rosewood uh, fretboard fan, like kind of like a Strat, um, then this is the guitar for you. Absolutely, like this, you you will you will love this thing. It's great. It's um, as far as weight goes, there's not a big difference. There's a pound. There's only a pound in the difference between these two. This one on my scale weighed in at 6.4, and this one on, on my scale again weighed in at 7.4 pounds. So I guess the difference is the wood that's absent from the top uh, wing here, I guess. Um, so yeah, weight-wise, there's not much of a difference. Playability-wise, neck-wise, they feel very similar. The IYV has a flatter radius. I don't know what the radius is. I don't have radius gauges here. Um, uh, but it's it's got to be a 14 or 16 radius on this one because it's it feels really flat. It's super easy to play like lead stuff. Uh, when you're cording, I tend my hand my hands get a little tired. Um, whereas on this one, it's more of a compound radius. So I think it's around maybe a 9.5 or a 10. You know, at the starting frets, and then it, it quickly moves on to like a 12, and then a, maybe a 14. Um, and maybe even 16 up here, I don't know, but it's it's definitely gets flatter as you go up the neck. So uh, these seem a little better for action. Compound radius, usually you can lower the action a bit and uh, still, you know, maintain kind of buzzless um, um, action or whatever, I guess. And uh, so, yeah, they're, 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 they're good. They're both really good. Uh, it just depends on what you like. So I can't say, oh, you definitely buy this one, you definitely buy this one, because I'm not advocating for either one. I really could care less. I'm just trying to be transparent. So for me, the Ert is the better guitar uh, for me because I like the options that it has. Um, I never found a Tele comfortable to play, although I love just the, I love the guitar, how it's just basic and it's a workhorse type of guitar. It just, I always found them so uncomfortable to play. Um, for long periods of time, they always have a neck dive because of how, you know, the strap is, uh, you know, above the 12th fret. Like if you look at the strap position here, like 12, 13, 14, 15, you're right around the 15th fret. There's no way that a telly, when you, when you, you know, when you hold it at these two hinge points, there's no way that it's not, it's going to sit like this. Like that, it's just not going to happen. There's just too much neck. And plus, this guitar has a pound less of wood at the top, so it's even lighter. So it's not going to pull that neck up, right? So you're constantly having to reposition the the position of the guitar. Um, if anybody tells me I have a telly that's perfectly balanced, it just sits this way like this. That no, <laughs> I I don't believe you. I just I just don't believe you. I've had tons of tellies that they just they don't balance. It's just the nature of the beast. It's like a friggin' uh, Gibson SG. They just don't balance they they always have neck dives um whereas a strat sits like this if you grab a strat in the two buttons and you put your like it'll it'll literally sit like this on your strat because the body is right the horn is longer and the body the leverage is more and the body the body's heavier than the neck so it'll it'll sit in that kind of natural playing position tellies are super comfortable to play when you're sitting down but when you're standing up they always tend to neck dive just a little bit now, where I, I, another reason why I like this guitar is because the contours make it so that it rests in your forearm really well. So when you're playing for hours, you don't notice the guitar digging into your forearm, like trying to go down. You don't, you don't notice that. Um, whereas when the bodies are square, kind of like this one, right, it has the big square edge, um, you're left with a nice line across your forearm at the end of the night, right? And uh, maybe a little numbness in the fingers or whatever. So... That's another reason why I prefer the Earth. It's just the ergonomics of it. I, I just I like it better. So that's pretty much it, guys, as far as everything goes. I made some notes here to see, just to make sure that I didn't go off on a bunny trail again. So so again, the IYV is 175 bucks. This is Canadian. I think they've gone up in price since I've bought mine, but 175 versus 389 for the Earth. Um, the setup both of them were great out of the box the fit and finish they were fantastic not perfect but they were you know fantastic um they both had their little quirks and kind of weird 
you know, CNC machine defect, or maybe maybe it's a human defect, I don't know. And uh, tuning stability on both were great. The nuts on the ERT are perfectly cut. They're really well cut. Um, you know, they, they have no sprouting, or the, like they look really smooth. Although some people have told me that their ERT is binding up the strings like crazy. I haven't had that issue with mine. Um, the IYV, the nut, the original nut that came on the IYV was, was terrible. Like it just looked terrible, but it worked. It just, it worked fine. It wasn't binding and uh, it just looked bad. So I, I swapped it out with a little graph tech, which I'm going to put on this one too, on the, on the earth. Uh, tuning stability was good. Uh, mod ability, the ability to change the parts and put different parts on the guitar. Anything metric will fit. Anything like, uh, you know, like that would be on a classic vibe or, or a Squire type style guitar, any, they'll fit. The American parts will fit as well. You might just to, you might have to ream out like the tuner holes or you might have to drill out your, um, the, where the volume pot comes up through the guitar or the, on the plate. You might have to make that a little bit bigger. But you get a reamer bit and that's, it's a piece of cake. So it's, it's, it's not hard to mod. Um, I mentioned the weight, so the IYV is a pound lighter, 6.4 versus 7.4 pounds. Um, and yeah, that's, I don't know if I've missed something, I, I, I don't really do these things a lot, but I've had two guitars that seem to be talked about a lot, so I wanted to really, you know, compare the two and give you a, give you a little idea of, you know, if you could only buy one, which one would you get? And the answer is, um, there is no answer really. It, it really comes down to you and what what you like. Um, so figure out what you like as far as, you know, the, the, the materials that the guitar is made with, the look of the guitar, I guess, you know, and, um, um, uh, you know, neck material, fret material, uh, pickup configuration. So figure out what you like with that, because that's not going to improve. Like if you buy a guitar that doesn't have that, you're probably going to want to come back to that. So then you're going to have to mod that stuff. So the closest the closer that the guitar can be to the style that you like, um, the better and the less money out of pocket for you, I, it would be my guess. Um, and then figure out how much money you want to spend and then, because money is kind of the, you know, the almighty decider, I guess, right? If you don't have $400 or 389 then maybe the IYV is, is better for you. Um, uh, Ert does sell cheaper guitars, but the Tele versions seem to be a little pricier. Um, for whatever reason. Now, I feel they're they're very worth the price, but um, I could be wrong. Now you in, in, in the US, you guys are gonna pay less money, and but maybe for you, it like for me, number-wise, like it's, it's a lower amount, but maybe for you in the US, that amount of money still is still too much for what you're getting, because you might be able to get a classic vibe for just a couple hundred bucks more, but here, I have to pay double uh, and then some to get a classic vibe, which, which to me, this guitar would run circles around. I don't know, I've had some classic vibes in the past, um, you know, and liked them. Um, there weren't anything home to, to write about, but I had to, um, I had to mod the crap out of them to get them like I wanted. And at the end of the day, I have a super expensive guitar that's still not worth anything because it's a classic vibe, right? So. I don't know what, what it is with people, but if it comes from overseas, the, the value just doesn't seem to be there. But uh, to me, the quality is still there. So you, you really have to like them and you really have to keep them. What I like about these guitars is I can, I can you know, even with the mods, I can play them for the next year and I can sell them and, and get my money back. Because anybody who plays guitars is going to strap one of these on, play it, and know that it's a quality instrument. Like, it, it's just, it's just fact. So I'm going to stop this video right now and I'm going to run through some sounds from both guitars. I'll play a couple of riffs that you guys might or may or may not recognize. And, um, and you can see the difference between like the classic vibe P90 or humbucker-ish tone versus the more traditional tone. I'm going to use a quilter inner block. Um, it's going to be set pretty much at 12 o'clock. Uh, maybe the highs will be down a little bit. I just, and, uh, I just find that both guitars are fairly bright, so I'll tweak the ties down. Um, the, I'm going to go through just a Marshall 112 uh, cab, uh, just stock, totally stock. And um, for a pedal, just so I can get a little bit of reverb, I'm going to use my uh, Fly Rig. It's a Fly Rig 5, not the signature model. And um, 
The, I'm not even going to use the blonde tuner uh, for the first clip. It's just going to be totally clean. The blonde, uh, sorry, the blonde amp, it says blonde and tuner, so I keep saying blonde tuner. Um, the blonde amp, which is like a fidget style, I'm not even going to engage it. And uh, for the harder rock stuff, I'll use the plexi uh, side of the pedal. And um, we'll, 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 you'll, you'll be able to see. I'll, I'll play one riff on the, the Earth guitar, and then I'll play the same riff on the IYV, and I'll just go back and forth because uh, there's no editing in these videos. Okay, I'm using my cell phone. Uh, what you're hearing is coming directly from the amp that's behind uh, my cell phone. Uh, there's no editing software. There's no. There's nothing. I'm trying to keep this as pure as possible. Um, I find I listen to a lot of videos and. And they're going through through some kind of computer software, and through then they're playing through a set of speakers that that to me is very impressive. Don't get me wrong; I'm not knocking these videos, but I'm like, I in a live situation at a gig, I would never play through that stuff. I don't know anybody who would, like, right? So it's got to affect the sound somehow. Like once the guitar goes through all that processing gear and comes out. You know, a set of Yamaha speakers or a set of Audio Technica speakers or whatever. How much of that is really unaffected? I I don't know. Like I, I have no idea. And you guys can fill me in because I'm just I'm really so I've I've watched a couple of the videos that I've downloaded and I know on the videos I say I I don't know how the audio will come through. Like if you guys are hearing what I'm hearing because I'm just using my phone. But I gotta say, when I listen to the videos on my phone, the ones that I put up, the sound of the guitar on my phone is, I'm not like, what, what is that? Like it pretty much sounds exactly like what I heard when I recorded it. So I don't know what kind of recording software they have in these phones, but they're, they're pretty good if you want like a true picture. Now, if you don't like, so what I, I guess what I'm getting at is, if you don't like the sound of this, of either of these guitars, then now keep in mind mine are modded, so you, it might be the mods that you don't like, but I would say don't get them because <laughs> they're going to sound pretty much like that when you get them too. So anyway, um, so I'm going to, I'll probably just stop this video, download it, and um, and then I'll just, I'll, I'll record another one with just go right into the sound. I'm not going to have enough room on, on my SIM card, I guess. Or not my SIM card, but my internal memory. So, once again, thanks a lot. And sorry for the rambling on, but I just want to be as transparent as I can. And I'm new to all this stuff. And I, I don't do this, obviously. It's clear that I'm not a professional. Um, but um, if there's any questions or something that I've missed uh, about, you know, comparing one to the other, just, you know, shoot me a comment and I'll, I'll get back to you. Um, Thanks again, and uh, to all the people I mentioned before, thank you very much for your support, and uh, I appreciate your comments um, and uh, your uh, your insight on and your knowledge on this stuff. It's it's great. So thank you very much. Uh, you guys stay safe. God bless, and uh, I'll be back with some sound clips. Take care.